In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to the next section of this course, which is all about NumPy. I'm going to talk about both what NumPy can be used for at a low level, as in what kinds of operations you can do with NumPy, and also what NumPy is used for at a higher level, as in why do we need these operations in the first place. NumPy is the core library of everything else we will do, so it's very important. The central object in the NumPy library is the NumPy array. Since in this course I'm assuming you have some level of familiarity with programming, then that means you know what an array is. At the very least, you should be comfortable with Python lists, which more or less behave like arrays, at least for our purposes. If I had to describe NumPy in one sentence, I would say it's a library for linear algebra and a bit of probability. So what exactly does this involve? So in linear algebra, we work with vectors and matrices, and less commonly, high-dimensional tensors. As you recall, a vector is one-dimensional, and a matrix is two-dimensional. Now, some of you might have noticed that, in different fields of math, there is a convention to treat vectors as two-dimensional. So if you have a d-length vector, you might think of it as a d-by-one column vector, or a one-by-d row vector. In NumPy, although you could represent vectors that way, it is unconventional, so normally you would just use a one-dimensional array for vectors. There are common operations on vectors and matrices that you should be familiar with. First, we have the dot product. The dot product, or the inner product, takes two vectors, multiplies them element-wise, and then sums all those products together. Mathematically, we can write it like what you see here. Now, because we have to multiply corresponding elements from each of the two input vectors, this implies that, in order for this to be a valid operation, both input vectors must have the same shape. Another common operation is matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication, although it doesn't seem like it, is kind of a more general form of the vector inner product. When you multiply two matrices together, you actually end up doing a bunch of mini dot products. You take row 1 of A and dot it with column 1 of B, row 1 of A and dot it with column 2 of B, and so on. Mathematically, we can write it like what you see here. Just like with the vector dot product, there are some limitations on the shapes of the matrices that you want to multiply. In particular, the number of columns in A must equal to the number of rows in B. Another way of saying that is, the inner dimensions must match. If A has shape M by N, and B has shape N by P, then the matrix multiplication of A and B will have shape M by P. Yet another common operation is the element-wise matrix product. This is an operation that they don't really teach in linear algebra, yet in practice is very common. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. You take each ijth element in A and multiply it by the ijth element in B. And clearly, this requires that both A and B have the same shape, which will also be the shape of the output. Now, of course, there is a lot more you can do with NumPy that I'm not going to go over in detail in this lecture because it's just the intro. But here are some ideas. We can use NumPy to solve linear systems, that is, systems of the form AX equals B, where you want to solve for X. We can use NumPy to find a matrix inverse and a matrix determinant. We can use NumPy to choose random numbers, which is extremely important. If you want a random number or a random matrix from the Gaussian distribution or the uniform distribution, NumPy can do that for you. Now, that's a lot of math, but what the heck is it used for? So, just so you don't feel like we're doing this for no reason, these are all very common operations in pretty much every machine learning algorithm. So, here are a few applications. Number one, linear regression. Number two, logistic regression. Number three, deep neural networks. And that pretty much includes everything in deep learning. Number four, k-means clustering. Number five, density estimation. Number six, principal components analysis. Number seven, matrix factorization, which is used in recommender systems. Pretty obvious from the name that it uses matrices. Number eight, support vector machines. Number 9, Markov models and hidden Markov models. Number 10, control systems, which are technically not really machine learning today, but there is huge overlap with machine learning. Number 11, game theory. Again, technically not machine learning, but it sneaks its way in sometimes. Number 12, operations research, which actually shares a lot of common techniques with machine learning. 
And finally, number 13, portfolio optimization. I mentioned this one because I know that a lot of people who get into machine learning have plans to apply it in finance. So if you were ever hesitant about learning linear algebra because you didn't know why it would be useful, hopefully now you understand it's essentially everywhere.